Our beginnings were, were very simple here at Haywood Street. We felt called by God to start a ministry here in the homeless corridor of Asheville, and this beautiful building happened to be vacant. It was a former United Methodist Church, and a number of us raised our hand to say we will we will start in earnest, but we didn't have any long-range plans. We didn't have any committees. We didn't have any staff. There was no budget. Uh, but we were really clear that we were going to try to do two things. One was we were going to try to welcome people who typically were displaced, estranged elsewhere, particularly around uh, severe mental illness, addiction, unhoused status. Uh, and then we were also going to eat together. That was core to who we were from the beginning. So let's welcome folks. And then when, once we get here, let's all sit around the table and break bread. Well, the Welcome Table was founded on the concept that uh, everybody matters, uh, that it is relational, that uh, we are trying our best to restore dignity. I've had input down there in a big way since 2013, and uh, I was uh, a companion down there for a while, a couple of years. We, uh, we started that to kind of offer people a safe place to come without any questions or reservations or hesitations. And uh, we wanted to be relational. And my whole objective was the restoration of dignity, to make it just as good as any restaurant downtown with, uh, with no tap. So that's what we try to do. We serve fresh hot food, that's a five-star meal. We have a chef down there, Jenny, who joined us last summer. The difference between the welcome table and a typical soup kitchen hopefully is dramatic and I in no way want to be judgmental. People need to eat and soup kitchens provide sustenance. We're again, rather than being a feeding program, that's not our primary aim. It's not to end hunger, although if we're part of that, that's wonderful. It's instead to be sacramental and it's also to communicate something about people's sacred worth. And the welcome table tries to convince people that they are not what the world calls them. Not the labels, not the stereotypes, not the disabilities. Uh, and we try to do that in a number of different ways. So it's, it's intended to be a, a meal of bounty that overwhelms people with grace. So you're gonna eat off a homemade piece of pottery, there's gonna be glass dimware, linen napkin, real silverware, tablecloth, fresh flowers, a napkin, a wait staff, homemade meal, best ingredients, a wait staff, and you can eat all you want. Whereas typically in a soup kitchen, it's gonna be, you're eating on food you and I threw away. There's usually a clock on you, so you've only got a few minutes to eat. And there's often a distinct separation between us and them. So the housed volunteers are typically in the kitchen with an apron on, the unhoused folks are at the table. And we want in every way to blur the have and have nots, the us and them, and instead create a family meal where it's just the holy we rather than us and them. Uh, we are scripture based. This is not secular. So uh, we try to look and gaze through the eyes of Christ and say, his command was feed my people. His command was take care of each other, love each other. So we tear down that stigma because we do not have a qualifier. So most places have a qualifier before you can eat free food. Most places have a qualifier before you can get anything free, but we do not have any qualifiers. You just simply come here and, and, and we try to make it as neutral as possible so that everybody is the same for the time that they're here. I, I've been all over the country traveling this year, and uh, in, over the last 13 years of being homeless, I uh, have experienced a lot of different uh, nonprofit organizations and stuff, and uh, it always tended to find a little bit of hip, hip criticism in it, and it was really hard for me. So when I found Haywood Street, it was, uh, it's just, I don't know, I felt so at home here when I got here and blessed to be here because Everybody that works here and the people that come here all come from their heart and it's like this place of like where their ego gets pushed aside and they're, they're, they come at it from heart and I just believe that if you do that you can't go wrong and that, that this is like it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that happens here man. Um, I've been asked a lot over the years about what resonates the most with me and why I, why I keep coming back I guess. Um, there's 
lots of different answers to that, but one that I always go back to is that it's the kind of place where um, you can, um, it's the kind of place where you can just be your authentic self. Everyone here, I think, feels that when you walk through the room and people, you know, people don't just say, how are you doing? Fine. How are you doing? People say, how are you doing? And genuinely want to know and people really answer and there's just kind of a deeper level of this has been one grand experiment in hospitality and welcome and doing church very differently. I, I don't pretend to know. Um, the Holy Spirit will continue to guide us and I, I don't know where she's gonna lead next. I think the legacy here will continue for many more years after all of us are gone. And I, we're, we're kinda, I know me and a lot of others are working very hard to make sure we hand this over in a way that it will continue. Uh, as you know, we all age, and uh, so I think they will say that we were obedient to, to, to Christ. I, I hope that's what they say. That we read it, we understood it, we studied it, and we executed it, and 